Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to Pinball Preparedness, where we're not owned by Jeff Bezos, Rupert Murdoch, or Mark Zuckerberg. Guess what that means? All right. <clears throat> Let's get into something that should be a little concerning to everybody. Like the title says, Bread and Circuses. All right. Food. I know. The... Let's talk about food again, but information is power. Wheat, all right, you know, let's go back to the basics, what they used to get to serve in prison, bread and water, right? Because you needed some sort of calories and you need some sort of hydration. That was the bare minimum that prisoners got. Bread, okay, bare minimum that a lot of the people in the world eat to sustain life. In an SHTF situation, we could be to a situation where that's what we're eating, okay? Now, like everybody else, I enjoy a sandwich, I enjoy a hamburger, whatever it would be, and those nice two little fluffy pieces of bread make for a good delivery system for all the goodness that's inside. <laughs> However, we may have a little problem with that. Now, we don't have to go into the important part that we all know that Russia and Ukraine provide 30% of the world's wheat, and that's going to be a big problem because there's something else going on over there right now, and so the farmers aren't exactly too concerned with planting fields for a tank to go through it. All right. But so what came out overnight, and this gets a little concerning, India has now banned wheat exports effective today uh they will honor all contracts that they had up to yesterday but as of today no more wheat is leaving india why is this important india is the second largest producer of wheat in the world okay india was originally expected to produce 111 million tons of wheat this year then weather had backed that down to 105. <clears throat> now they're backing it down to 93. <clears throat> okay. So nearly 20 million tons less. That's a lot of wheat produced. And they're not going to export any of it. Now, everybody's going to say, oh, okay, big deal. So, you know, how's that going to affect us? We don't live, you know, in... Asia or whatever, where a lot of that stuff gets exported to. Well, here's the deal with the United States, okay? All this Grand Solar Minimum weather we've got, I mean, the dryness, you know, the droughts that are affecting places, and then the floods that are affecting others, okay? Well, red winter wheat, okay, which is supposed to be harvested now, is pretty much... A write-off okay uh, there's basically nothing and the red winter wheat is what's used to make bread flour okay <sighs> at least in Kansas okay they are where they're gonna be harvesting this here later this month outputs going to fall well below the five-year average all right they expect the Yield to be between zero and five bushels an acre. Okay? None to five bushels an acre. Normally, they get 35 to 40 bushels an acre. All right? Now, let's talk about going further north where they're going to be starting to plant uh, spring wheat. You know, bagels, pizza crusts, that sort of stuff. Okay? The state is already, or at least in Minnesota, the state is already predicting a drop of five bushels an acre because of weather, all right? Only 8% of the spring wheat has been seeded at this point of the year. Usually, about 65% has been seeded. So what does that mean, all right? That means we're going to have big problems as well, that there's not going to be any to harvest later on down the road. Canada, same problem. China, same problem. Pick everything, okay? To give you an idea, this is what's happened so far with wheat prices. In March, 
wheat was priced out at about seven fifty a bushel. Yesterday at one point wheat pushed twelve bucks a bushel. Okay, let's talk about inflation there. You're talking forty percent, right? We still closed up in the elevens, eleven fifty ish thereabouts. All right. Farmers would love to plant wheat right now. There's profit in it, okay? But they can't get it. So where do we get the circuses part and kind of how I started this whole thing? I'll get into that next. United States, well, we don't expect shortages here. We want to be providers of American grains to the rest of the world as we're seeing shortages in part because of the war in Ukraine. Gee, and I thought denial was a river in Egypt. <laughs> See, this is it. It's like everybody's got to try to prop up this administration and put blinders on the public. When Bezos and the Washington Post prints, you know, a story like that saying, you know, the world has plenty of wheat. Putin's using it as a weapon. Right. Okay. Or the next guy uh, from Unheard, uh, ignore the wheat panic. The world still has plenty. Really? Okay. Those are just the articles. But for Jen Psaki to come out yesterday and say, while we don't expect shortages here, we want to be providers of grains to the rest of the world. Really? We're planting 5% instead, or was it 8%? Instead of 65%, we don't have shortages here. And your plan is what we do have, let's send to the rest of the world? Guys, this has gotten to the point of absolute insanity. We are doing, the United States, whatever we can to, not you and me, but I mean our government, is doing whatever we can to literally destroy this country. I mean, and like we've all said many times, this is planned, <clears throat> okay? We're sending so many weapons over to Ukraine, we don't have enough to defend ourselves. Gee, Iran might really like that, okay? Gee. There's a worldwide food shortage, so rather than feed our people, as Jen Psaki said yesterday, let's send it to the rest of the world. No. Why do you think these countries, China's banned food exports, India's banned food exports, Russia's banned food exports, why? Because they need the food to feed their own people. Why is it that the rest of the world, let's put it this way, the non-Western nations, are concerned with themselves, and the Western nations have this, oh, kumbaya, we need to help everybody at the expense of their own people, okay? You've heard me say it every time, er, you know, many, many, many times. I'm fine giving food, money, whatever it is, to starving kids in Ethiopia. Once every single kid in this country has a full belly when they go to bed. I'm fine helping people build houses and stuff like that in Indonesia. Once every single veteran has a roof over their head. Until then, no. This is how this administration is delivering it to our posterior. How about that? Uh, to all of us taxpayers. We suffer so the rest of the world can get up a little bit. Again, this is a race to the bottom. This is, and I want you to understand this. This is exactly what communism is. It's a race to the bottom. It's not rob from the rich, it's rob from the middle class and give to the poor. In other words, make the whole middle class poor. Now, we have food issues, right? We want to send $40 billion to Ukraine, whatever it would be, for humanitarian aid, for weapons, for whatever. Have Bezos write a check. He can write a check for $40 billion, no problem. 
Have Zuckerberg write a check. Have Gates write a check. Have Buffett write a check. Have any of these guys. Have them all split it. Okay? Take it, you know, you want to you wanna help everybody? Instead of buying a newspaper or buying Twitter, if you believe in the cause so much, put your money where your mouth is. Stop expecting all of us to do it because we don't have any money left to put where your mouth is. Bread and circuses. We don't get the bread. And all they do is run a circus. P.T. Barnum would be proud. Pinball out.